Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation, a massive precious metals company implements ESG. Is this a good or bad thing? We're going to talk about that in this video. Let's explore. If you enjoy videos talking about precious metals of all sorts, including news, discoveries, crimes, and politics even related with precious metals, it's all there. Pretty much a lot of different topics to discover and discuss with precious metals. And this one is controversial indeed. It is because of ESG. Now, the image you're looking at there is a contract size gold bar. And this is something you would find maybe on the LBMA. Gold is gold for most of us. Many of us, though, would probably rather have gold that was sourced ethically and probably even environmentally consciously. You know, we probably don't want to find gold that was illegally produced where people have um, put with sweat labor and uh, even slaves to the point of slavery or in servitude in order to produce these bars. You know, on the surface, that all sounds pretty good. We want our gold to be refined and purified and dealt with in a responsible manner and legal manner. In fact, if we take a look here and see what ESG is about, a cursory Google uh, search brings us to the CFA Institute that talks about this. ESG investing and analysis. So if Google says that this is the place to go for the definition of these terms, well, we're going to go here because they are going to try to make it as positive as possible. Well, let's take a look at this. ESG, as many of us probably now know, stands for environmental, social, and governance. And on the surface, it sounds good. Even the term governance, well, that just maybe can mean that something that's a uh, uh, organized or regulated in some way, and so it can uh, implement these social and environmental concerns. But let's take a look at each of these factors here. Environmental is what they show here, exploring climate change's impact on investing, key tools for investment professionals and case studies. That's just the basic definition there. Already, I see a fault with this because this just assumes that climate change is settled science, which by the way, newsflash, it is not. There's a lot of fear mongering in that world and a lot of junk science occurred from models where people can take any kind of numbers to make the model say whatever they want to, to push whatever agenda they want. So already uh, that term, which by the way, they used to call it global warming, is politically charged for sure. And by the way, everybody wants a clean environment. Everybody wants clean air and clean water. So again, on the surface, it would seem to be good. We want uh, industry to be responsible. And I understand, and I'm not even against some regulation in order to make that happen. But by and large, I believe in a sense the free market would dictate a lot of that. And that's kind of where the world is going anyway. Well, as a for instance, I got solar panels because uh, because it's going to save money and it's also going to um, help for a cleaner environment. But my main motivation was was the financial benefit from it. The next one is social, and this is to discover that unique actions companies are taking across the globe are taking to advance diversity. Equity and inclusion, which is known as DEI in the organization. Now, diversity is fine. You know, I'm not against diversity, uh, but I also don't think it should be a focus of what companies do to make money. And that's essentially what they refer to as um, affirmative action. And that is hiring to have diverse people in your workplace um, so that you can meet that standard, even if they don't meet the standard. Uh, that the company requires in order for them to make money. Equity is a very scary word if you look at it compared to equality. Notice they don't put equality in there. It's equity. 
And equity is a very different thing than equality. Um, so if you hear, hear that word equity, uh, that's the time to run and be scared. I'm not going to really go into that, but that's a whole nother video lesson uh, to look at. Just look that word up yourself. I trust the audience to kind of um, come to their own conclusions there. Equity is not good. So these social governance there, you know, yes, we want, there's other things, and we'll, t we'll look into this a little bit deeper, but already this is not looking good. Governance, they have a position on environmental, social, and governance in integration that they have there, and we won't necessarily go into that. We'll look at the key ESG factors here before we look at the actual story. I think it's good to define these terms to see where they're at and see if this company, this large precious metals company, wants to be involved in this. So here they give kind of a bullet list of what this is about. Conservation of the natural world, climate change and carbon emissions. But then carbon is a natural element, by the way, and it's not evil or it's not bad. Air and water pollution. Obviously, we want to uh, certainly uh, limit that for sure and, and do away with it if at all possible. Biodiversity. I really don't know what that means, biodiversity. Deforestation. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, there are ways to be able to do things. And most of these uh, um, companies and that do do things that involve uh, large area, large, vast expanse of land, uh, especially these open pit mines. Obviously, trees have got to come down. You can't mine with trees in the way of the gold. Energy efficiency. That's an obvious thing that if you can do it in a viable manner, yes. It, it, could, it should be implemented, and because obviously lower fuel cost is definitely a very good thing, but not at the expense of higher production cost. Waste management, which kind of ties into air and water pollution or ground pollution, and water scarcity. Um, now, obviously, for mining, it does take a lot of water too, so you have to take into account some of those things, but um, obviously, all things that probably have been for years been considered for some of these mining companies or probably for any company and in industry, especially considering that there are pretty heavy regulations, especially here in the Western world and especially in the United States. Next is social, consideration of people and the relationships, customer satisfaction. Well, that's a no brainer. If any company wants to succeed, they have to have satisfied customers. So it's kind of a ridiculous notion that that would even need to be included in there. Data protection and privacy. That kind of goes against what uh, ESG is all about, especially if you look at the World Economic Forum. Although they are under the guise of this, but anything digitized and implemented with this ESG standard means that likely um, your data are not protected and you don't have privacy. Gender and diversity. Now, again, these, this diverse and, and these gender uh, things with the whole woke movement, that's exactly squarely related to that, and that's dangerous. Employee engagement, now, obviously, as, that's another thing with, uh, with respect to customer satisfaction. If you have poor morale among your employees, your business is not going to be successful. Community relations goes without saying. A lot of companies obviously have... Uh, press uh, relations and community relations and have ways to be able to reach out, especially with social media. That's unnecessary. Human rights. Well, obviously, there's labor laws and the things like that and respecting the rights of humans based off of the uh, said nations that are Western nations that have uh, and respect rights. That would happen in the workplace as well. And that goes really along with labor standards uh, too. So, you know, these are things... Some of these things have been around a long time. They don't need to be recoupled because essentially the mass, vast majority of the social aspect of it is around wokeism, which is, which is dangerous. Finally, there's governance, board composition, um, which I kind of, that's a very broad term that almost, almost makes it sound like gender diversity within the board. Audit committee structure, bribery and corruption, well, obviously, you want to make sure that you're not breaking the law and you're not corrupt. Um, a lot of this is common sense. Uh, executive compensation, this is something that is uh, sounds limiting to where your executive board can only have so much. Now, obviously, profit 
uh, obviously the, uh, the the situation there with that kind of uh, thing is well does does your company have profit sharing with their with their employees that goes to employee engagement I think it's a good, it's a good, it's a good idea to have or give stock options or what have you to some of the mid management and even uh, those uh, all the way through the company. Um, then you have lobbying. Well, what does that mean? Lobbying governments uh, for political contributions. You know, if you don't, if your contributions aren't to the right party, uh, political party, then your government score will be down. Very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Whistleblower schemes. Uh, this is an interesting concept because that ties in directly with lobbying and political contributions, in my view. Already, a bunch of red flags going up there with this ESG. Now let's get to the main story. This is very important, folks. I know it took a long time to get there, but we need to define these terms. Sprott, which is a leader in precious metals, has now become an advocate of environmentally responsible and ethically sourced gold with a new exchange-traded fund. And this is a... This is where they're implementing this ESG. We've defined the term, and it looks like Sprott is embracing it. If they are embracing it according to the definitions that we found on Google through that organization um, that we talked about here, which is, again, um, the CFA Institute, then this is pretty scary. Tuesday, the world's most prominent precious metals investment firm launched the Sprott ESG Gold ETF, SESG. SESG is the first gold ETF that invests in gold bullion that meets the environmental, social, and governments and provenance standards specifically developed by Sprott, the company said. So you think about it, this is provenance standards developed by Sprott. So it could be that they are using different standards uh, and, and definitions than what is at the CFA Institute. So um, what is the true definition of ESG? Well, you look at the World Economic Forum, and what I had just described, it's not a good thing. And in fact, I would dare to say that if Sprott was smart, and if they wanted to take these standards that they've developed themselves, I would not be calling it ESG. I would call it maybe common sense <laughs> and and protective and some, some other way to be able to... Uh, um, um, show what they're doing and to be able to provide ethically sourced gold. And maybe that's just it, legally and ethically sourced gold. Uh, the company has partnered with the Royal Canadian Mint to hold the ETF's physical precious metal. The investment firm said it will be buying gold for its ETF from several Canadian mines operated by Agnico Gold Mines Limited and Yamaha Gold. We created SESG to fill a gap in the marketplace with a gold fund focused on trust, transparency, and traceability. Our goal is to answer a number of key questions for investors. Where does my gold come from? Who produced it? And was it produced sustainably or recognized ESG leaders? Through our partnership with the Royal Canadian Mint and our relationships with leading Canadian gold producers, Sprott is uniquely positioned to offer a convenient way for investors to own physical gold that aligns with the ESG values, said uh, John Kiampaglia, uh, CEO of Sprott Asset Management. Sprott expects to expand its precious metal sources to include the North American-focused producers that have proven and tr have proven and transparent ESG track records. Producers providing gold for a new fund will also comply with the Canadian Mint's Responsible Metals Program. Gold producers have noted that demand for sustainability and ethically sourced gold continues to rise. Canadian companies have been at the forefront of the ESG movement. So in reality, we don't need the social part of it. Maybe a little bit of governments, maybe uh, uh, being, you know, what most companies do these days is they are environmentally conscious. Uh, we want to be able to, we don't want to do it uh, illegally, obviously. And if you do it, um, where you're not in c consideration of the environment, you're more than likely acting illegally. So it's really unnecessary in my view. The article goes on to say, we understand that ESG considerations are an opportunity to drive improved performance and deliver on our vision to build a high value business. We believe that we are recognized within the mining industry for our global leading ESG practices, for having one of the lowest GHG insensitivities and for operating in safe jurisdictions. 
So it kind of goes on. It's vital that we protect our, our operating environments and maximize the positive impact we have in host communities. This is why we are delighted to partner with Sprott, the first ever ESG-focused physical gold fund established specifically to acquire gold that is underpinned by strong ESG fundamentals. I believe Yamaha's conclusion in this fund reflects our strong performance and commitment to push boundaries in the industry to deliver responsibly mined gold ounces that benefit all. You know, I may retitle this video to uh, the company goes woke with gold. Um, I just don't know. It's it, because what is the S involved? You know, what's what? Uh, how does social uh, have anything to do with gold? I'd be very curious to know. Uh, obviously, we, again, we want clean. We want ethically, legally sourced gold. No problem. Does the Royal Canadian Mint traffic in illegal gold? Does Sprott deal with the illegal gold? Or, you know, my guess is probably they don't. And probably what they already have in effect is already the case. But the problem is, is this is where major corporations are going these days. Uh, we know it and we've seen it, especially with the World Economic Forum. Everybody is going there. It's a trend. The ESG is the buzz acronym and everybody's going there, but be very wary, be very cautious. And what are your thoughts on this? Gold is gold, no matter where it comes from. But nonetheless, we all want clean gold or we want gold that's sourced ethically for sure and legally and with respect to the environment as well. Um, and I think most gold mined in the in the world probably is that's done legally that is is done that way the illegal stuff is going to happen they don't care about esg they don't care about the environment they don't care about people or or any of that that's going to continue how that goal gets processed is a different story uh, that can be cracked down upon without going woke let me know your thoughts in the comment section below I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate share Comment and subscribe.